Greetings and welcome to part three of the flute series. This is going to focus on uh, the yellow belt for band karate. We're going to be looking at the book Essential Elements, pages seven through nine, focusing on numbers uh, 21 to 39 in your book. Lots of stuff, a lot of new things, some new notes, so hang on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the top of page seven. It talks about a whole note. Uh, and it looks a lot like, well, just a circle, and there's no stem on it, and that just means you hold a note for four beats. Remember quarter notes, you had one per every beat, bop, do, 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 do. You had half notes, which you would, uh, you had every two beats, right? Do, 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 do. A whole note, you're going to hold for four beats. Do, do. It also talks about a whole rest, which is four beats of silence. But you notice that it looks a lot like the half rest. A whole rest looks like a hole underneath the fourth line on the musical staff. They have a comparison in that orange box about a whole rest and a half rest. Remember, a half rest is two beats, whole rest is four beats. A couple ways to tell the difference is a, hat, a half rest looks like a hat on the middle line. A whole rest looks like a hole underneath the fourth line. Another way to tell is that when you see a whole rest, that's the only thing that's going to be in the measure. Four beats. You could tell it that way too. Um, so number 21, the whole thing, we start off with a whole note E flat. E, D, 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 C. Whole rest, four beats, B, D, D, E. It's repeated. I'm just going to play it once, though. page, we're going to go over to number 38 in your book on page 9. This is your first yellow belt song, Jingle Bells. Woo! Alright, so let's go through the notes on this one. But one thing I want you to be aware of is that the first line and the second line are the exact same except the last two measures of each line, or the box. Remember, every measure is a box. Alright, so let's look at it. It goes D, 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 D. D, F, B, C, D, E, 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 D, 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 C, C, D, C, F, D, 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 F, B, C, D, E, 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 D, 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 F, F, E, C, B. Notice when I'm playing this, everything is on the beat. Boom, boom, ball. There's none of this jingle all the way. None of that. It's just very boom, 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 ball. Everything's on the beat. All right, here we go. Let's give it a whirl. Progressing, continually focus on that articulation, that tonguing. Remember that ta when you're playing each note. Again, it's the difference of nice and crisp. And then if you use an air attack, it will never sound as good as that tonguing. Um, also, those diving breaths. If you think about the flute, half your air doesn't even go in the hole. It goes over the hole, so you lose a lot of your air. So those diving breaths are going to help you get through the song without getting dizzy. Remember those commas are breath marks. If you can, 
try to get um, through uh, those two measures at a time before you get to the, the breath mark to breathe, okay? If you can't, that's okay. Breathe when you need to, but keep that in mind so that as you progress, you're like, oh, breath mark, let's see if I can do that. Let's look at number 31 now in your book. This will be the second Yellow Belt song in the band Karate. Uh, Mozart Melody, I'm going to spoil the surprise, is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And you need a new note. Look at the very top of page 8 in your book. At 27, you have note G. Ooh, it sits right on top of the staff. You think of the staff? We have every good boy does fine. Or you can, if you go to every single one of those, we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. It just goes up the alphabet. And then G sits right on top. So here's your high G. Notice that the fingering, thumb, one, two, three, pinky. It's just like your F, but without this finger. If it sounds like this, you're blowing too slow. It's got to be a high. That's your G you're going to need for number 31, Mozart Melody. Let's go through the notes for Mozart Melody. B, B, F, F, G, G, F, E, E, D, D, C, C, B, F, F, E, E, D, D, C, F, F, E, E, D, D, C, B, B, F, F, G, G, F, E, E, D, D, C, C, B. song is going to be number 34, Doodle All Day. Um, <clears throat> this one you also need another new note, and this is found right above it in number 33 on page 9, Deep Pockets. That's note A. Notice that it's on the second space, right? F-A-C-E. Uh, and since it's lower, it's going to be a, your, uh, a low note for you, okay? Uh, the fingering is like your G, but pull off the ring finger. So thumb, one, two, pinky. <laughs> If it sounds like this, you're too high. You need to lessen your air. Have you noticed that, excuse me, a lot of your notes, if you blow too high, you get a higher version of it, or too much, you, blow, you get a higher version. Uh, and if you blow slow, you get a low version. So a lot of your notes are like that, where there are two versions, a high and a low. It could be fun to experiment with that just to see what kind of notes you can get. And it's good practice to figure out that air. Here's that low A again. So here's your notes for 34. D, D, B, B, D, D, B, D, D, E, D, C, half rest. C, C, A, A, C, C, A, F, F, E, C, B. All right, let's try this one. repeat sign, we're going to skip it for now. All right, so those are the Yellow Belt songs, but there are a lot of songs that are good to do and some more new concepts to learn. So let's keep going. Let's go back to page seven. Uh, I really like March Steps, number 23. Um, it talks about a key signature right above it. So let's look at what a key signature is. A key signature tells us which notes to play with sharps or flats throughout the music. Your key signature, the one they have there, indicates the key of B flat. Let's play all B's flat and all E's flat. Okay, so look at the picture of the key signature right there, and let's simplify this a little bit. You have the treble clef, and then you have two little B's on the music staff. Notice the first little B is on the third line. Every good boy. The next one is on the fourth space, F-A-C-E. B, 
and E, that means all your B's and all your E's are flat. We already knew that because that's all you've learned so far, okay? We may say B or we may say E when we're singing it just because it's easier, but it's B flat and it's E flat. So that's just the official way of letting you know in a piece of music that all your B's are flat and all your E's are flat. Eventually, you're going to have songs where one or the other is uh, not flat, it's natural, it's a different note. But you haven't learned those yet. When we get there, we'll tell you about it. But just so you're aware of what those little two little symbols are there, uh, we wanted to go over that. So 23 march steps, you have the treble clef, you've got that key signature, that B flat and E flat, which you, again, doesn't really change anything for you right now. And then you have that 4-4, four, four. remember, is the time signature, which tells you four beats in the measure, the top number. Always look at the top number. Okay. Now, when we talk about that being four beats in measure, it's four beats of music, not four things, four beats of music. So in 23, we have four quarter notes, right? B, D, B, D, four beats. The next one is a whole note C, but a whole note's four beats by itself. C, the next measure, four quarter notes, E, D, C, E, then we have a whole note D, D. All right, simple enough? So we're going to play these. Um, at this point, I'm not going to be really going through the notes in all the songs anymore. If you still need to write your notes in, that's okay. Through the yellow belt, I allow my students to write their notes in their songs, okay? Because you're still trying to learn these notes, make a good sound, and hold the darn thing. So feel free to write your notes in. After this video, I would encourage you to learn how to read the notes without writing the notes in. Just memorize where they are on the musical staff. You'll thank yourself later. The reason for that is, eventually, I told you, we're going to be learning like E flat, and then we're going to be learning E natural, and then we've got all these different things. We've got whole notes and half notes and quarter notes. So if you write, say, an E for a note, does that mean E natural? Does it mean E flat? Does it mean E sharp? Does it mean you play it for one beat, two beats, three beats, four beats? Is it high? Is it low for when you start learning high and low versions of all these notes? When you just write a letter, it's very nebulous. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. When you're starting out, it can help you a lot. But after, you know, this yellow belt portion, after 38 in your book, it's really not going to help you. It's going to hurt you because you're not going to be able to know how long to play it or what version of it to play. So after this part, please don't write your notes in. Just learn how to do it. It's going to be slow. It's going to be hard. But that's okay. You're practicing every day, and I promise you will get it. You are smart. You are going to be fine. Okay, let's play this March Steps 23. Number 25, Lately Row. It's a two liner. Page 8, 27 was where we learned note G, but we didn't actually play the song. So we're going to play number 27 because we have that G. Also look above it, you have something called a fermata. It looks like an eyeball. Uh, it's also called a hold. It means that you play the note that has a fermata over it for a little bit longer. Okay, so if on this particular exercise 27, you notice you have a fermata on that last E flat. Uh, so that whole note is 4 beats. So you're going to play that note at least 5 beats or six beats, or a million beats, as long as you want to. Probably only about five or six. Here we go, number 27. Number 
28 is Au Claire de la Lune, another good one, utilizing that G. Page 9, we're going to look at deep pockets. Notice the last note has a fermata over it, so you're going to hold it, that last B flat, and you have that low A. Remember, thumb 1, 2. Just another thing as I'm thinking of it, remember, always keeping your foot out pretty straight, all right? You're going to want to keep your head pretty straight, too. One thing we don't want, and a lot of kids do, is they put it on their shoulder and they go right there. Okay? This is not a good way to play flute. Slouchy like this was not a good way to play your flute. Make sure you're always sitting up tall, feet flat fanning forward, keeping your flute nice and up, keeping your arms relaxed, not like this, not like this, just like this. I'm moving a little this way because this was more of my music stand with my book is, and so that you can see my fingers. All right, here's 33, Deep Pockets. Number 36 is called a tisket, a tasket, and we have this new thing called pickup notes. So pickup notes are where you add an extra beat to a song at the beginning. So a tisket, a tasket, that up uh, is your pickup. Otherwise, without it, it would just be tisket, a tasket. So here's number 36 with that pickup note. You just play an extra F. Nine is the last one in this series I like to do, my dreidel. Notice you have a pickup note in there, a pickup F. It's two lines. So let's kind of go through the things we've learned. We've got the treble clef, the key signature telling you B flat, E flat, which is all you have, so it's all you got, and four, four, four beats in the measure, and then you have that F pickup note. There's a couple new things in here. Uh, look in the middle of page nine. It talks about dynamics. So dynamics is your volume control. Now we're going to talk about going loud and going soft, which is hard, I personally think, on the flute. Because you're trying to get your air out to get the note out, but then we're trying to adjust it enough so that you can play a quieter or a louder version of that note too. Okay, so dynamics will be pretty subtle at first. But let's talk about dynamics. Notice you have F, which is forte. In Italian, that means play loud. MF, M is mezzo, means medium. So MF is mezzo forte, means medium loud. Then you have P, which stands for piano, which is soft. MP would be medium soft. My dreidel, number 39, that starts you off mezzo forte, regular, like a nice regular uh, volume. Then it tries to take you down to a quiet piano halfway through the first line. And then you notice there's an F at the very last note of the, uh, the first line, it means play loud. So just so you know, those letters are not note names. You have, there is no M note, there is no P note. Um, so don't get confused thinking that, oh, that's an F. No, it stands for forte, it means play that loud. Here's my dreidel. That's Yellow Belt and going through 39 in your Essential Elements books. Keep on practicing. Let's talk a little bit about practicing before we sign off. At this point, really you should be playing every day for about 20 minutes. If you practice every day for 20 minutes, you will do very well. You will figure this out. You will figure all that out and all the notes out. You will do well. I have never seen someone do well if they weren't practicing. If you just go to your lesson at school, and that's the only time you play for the week, 
then you're going to be doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for months and you're going to get very frustrated and you might quit. I don't want that. No, no teacher wants that. But if you practice every day, I promise you are going to continue to build on your skills and then you will get better and better and you will love the instrument. I can't tell you the number of students who are like, I don't like the instrument, I can't do it, it's hard. Well, have you been practicing at home? No. We'll go practice at home. And if they listen and they do that, they come back and like, guess what, Mr. Budnick? I can do this. I'm getting some sounds. Listen to me. I am awesome. Yes. So if you are struggling, practice more. Okay. If you are uh, excelling and you're going your lesson group, you're kind of uh, getting bored because you're practicing so much, you're doing so, so good, I would encourage you to use these videos to keep pushing yourself ahead. Try new songs. Go ahead. I dare you. If you finish the first book by, you know, you know, in two months or three months or whatever, great. We'll give you the second book and we'll give you even harder music and you'll keep going. There is no limit to how good you can get. Um, I teach in fourth and fifth grade band. I've had fourth graders, many fourth graders, finish the entire book, all the fourth grade and fifth grade curriculum in one year or less. It happens. So as long as you're practicing and you have a goal, you're going to be fantastic. Okay, the next video is going to focus on the orange belt in band karate. We'll talk to you later.